So what do we mean when we talk about masculine and feminine energy? You hear these terms thrown around so much, but what do they really mean? So I figured I'd stop and define them since, you know, I have to know what these things mean, being an astrologer and a Kriya Yogi. Um, and yeah, you just, you just hear these words thrown around a lot in this world, in the wellness world, like, you know, astrologers say, oh, there's going to be a, mass, a mixing of masculine and feminine energies and blah, blah, like, what does that really mean? It seems really like vague in general and just kind of like, it seems like it's almost taking astrology down a peg if we don't really define these things. So let me define these things as I was taught them and as psychologists have defined them. And uh, yeah, I think this is just something that could be helpful for a lot of people, even people who aren't astrologers. So first off, from the standpoint of like uh, sacred knowledge and the occult and nature and astrology, uh, there's nothing that, gender is not a social construct. There's nothing that society can do to rearrange itself. Like we can't just get rid of capitalism and then all of a sudden I'm gonna be able to get pregnant. You know, like that's just an absurd notion. So first get that out of your head uh, and then you'll learn what these energies really relate to by studying nature because nature acts just as a because nature acts just the same way that uh well all nature acts the same way it has an order it has a hidden order to it and that's what astrology really reveals and all these you know arts reveal not just astrology but so what is well astrology and the sacred arts the wise they're talking about masculine feminine they're they're replicating nature so the sun is masculine because it reaches out. It's always beaming down. It's always shining. It's extroverted. So that which is masculine is that which reaches out. And that which is feminine is that which awaits the reaching or which receives. Like how the moon receives the sun's light and cools it and then reflects it back in a cool, more nurturing way that helps the herbs and the plants grow. And so the moon is feminine and the sun is masculine. So that's one of the simplest ways that the ancients were able to see this. And the sun was seen as God, a God, and the, the moon was seen as a goddess. And, but again, these, these are concepts that are universal. They're not just something that one culture made up. China is very different from the Western European world, but China also had yin and yang. Um, you know, Jung had the anima and the animus you know in ayurveda we have pitta and kapha and then we have masculine and feminine signs and on and on so so one of the so basically you know you study the elements and you study nature and that's how you see what real masculine and feminine energy is and then you just kind of replicate that down into into just into humans male and female because in fact we are made in the image of God, you know? And in the sacred arts like astrology, we are made in the image of God and this entire creation is within us. And so it's also important to say that, of course, men and women both have male and female sides within us and we're all born with a sun and a moon. But for men, the masculine side is more accentuated and this feminine side is suppressed more, and for women, it's the opposite. So what does that really mean? Again, feminine energy is the ability to, to receive, like the water element, it, the water holds, it, it adheres, it, it, it just finds the lowest place and just, and cups and hold, you know what I mean? Um, it, it softens, it nourishes, it, it takes in things. Water is feminine, earth is feminine. Wind and fire are masculine. Wind is moving about, again, reaching out penetrating into different areas just like how men sexually penetrate that's their that's what they're trying to do the wind does that the fire does that as well fire burns and penetrates and goes into things and burns them up and transforms them so fire and wind are masculine that's why all the air and fire signs are male signs water and earth are feminine and that's why all the water and earth signs are female signs so <clears throat> in a uh you know in another sense like the sun is described as being intelligent the moon is said to be all-knowing so it's kind of funny because the sun is the left brain intelligence that wants to like uh figure things out and you know chart things out and do some graphs and all 
and it's that logical left brain rationale. So that's great, but the moon, the feminine side, is the right brain, the intuition, the feeling nature, and it's all-knowing. Wouldn't you rather be all-knowing than intelligent? So, in the Shastras in India, the sun is described as being square, and the squareness, this is so funny because this, the masculine energy likes things to be square, and even men have more like square jaws and more angular features, but that's why men like things to be straightforward, linear, uh, they, that's why men don't want to ask for directions, this kind of stereotype, you know, is because we're like the sun. Think about the sun. The sun never goes retrograde. It's always got to light the kingdom regularly like clockwork. That's what creates the world. If he doesn't do that, the world doesn't get created. The moon is feminine and is all-knowing. It's not intelligent. It's all-knowing. But again, wouldn't you rather be all-knowing than and you know be able to feel things and just know things rather than have to do all these charts and intelligent you know rational research and logical thinking and graph it out and stuff like that like men have to do so that's a real advantage you know feminine you know the mother's intuition that's what the moon is that's what we're talking about here um and in this same way uh the the moon is cyclical and circular and the sun the masculine energy is straightforward and linear and you see this in in relationships too because men men um don't need feeling and 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 all this all-knowing emotional stuff as much men just want to be respected for what they're doing and, and everything more so let's put it this way um even in a gay relationship lesbian whatever kind of relationship it is there's going to be one person who is the male and one is the female polarity and the masculine polarity is that which wants to be respected for its thoughts and its actions and its ideas and that would that which it does and the feminine party is that which wants to be respected more for its feelings and just who it is and be cherished more so uh it, yeah even in a gay relationship there's one that's going to want to be cherished more one that's going to want to be respected more and that's the male and the female and that's actually some of the best advice i can give people is choose what you want if you're having trouble in relationships it might be because you've not clearly chosen which one of these you want to be and so you're not able to attract that right thing and you know what's really interesting is as men get older our testosterone levels drop and our estrogen rises and we become more yin and so older men want to be cherished more and more than they did when they were younger and the same way with women, their estrogen starts to drop and when they get into their 40s and stuff, their testosterone rises and they want to be respected more. And um, this is also why you see a lot of women like quitting like their relationships and starting new jobs and becoming healers and all this stuff like uh, in their 40s. Um, but that's a whole nother video topic. <laughs> um, so most young women feel better when they are cherished than when they are respected. And this is because of the fem this is healthy feminine energy. Um, to a lot of modern women, uh, cherishing a partner actually feels like being a doormat. It feels like being walked all over because they they feel like no, in feminism we can't do that and this and that and all. And it's actually a really unfortunate thing because they're actually society is tricking women. Not maybe not intentionally, but something is causing women to lose their most sacred power and give it up and try to compete with men and try to be like men and that's just dumb because that's men would always win in that sense just like how if men try to become women women will always win so don't do that don't make that mistake um and learn more about your feminine side if you're not in happy relationships and you're 30 or older it's your fault most likely look i'm the same way i'm 35 and i'm not married right now so i still have work to be done on myself right that's why I got into astrology, was to work on my psyche and myself. But yeah, that's just one of these things that uh, in the modern day, and it's the same with men, where men are like afraid to be masculine because we've been really neutered with by society. But uh, for women, they're afraid to cherish. They feel like it's vulnerable. They feel like it's a weakness. Um, but men who want respect find it very difficult to cherish women who also just want respect. So that's the thing is that they have to make a decision. Someone has to make a decision here, you know? Otherwise you end up creating kind of a competition. And I've definitely felt this a lot because I have a strong masculine side, but I also have 
I also have a strong feminine side too, and so uh, I don't know. I, I I I know what I know how valuable both sides are, but there's been a lot of times in life where I've met like other astrologer women who like just got into astrology, and they want to. They just it's just interesting that they tend to. Um, it's, it's like they don't seem to realize how much friction they cause by constantly trying to prove that they know something about astrology to me and that they're trying to like compete with me and like uh, assert how much they know and I'm like look I, it's cool I get that you know that and stuff and I, I, I cherish that and I love that but like I'll, I'll, you'd actually make me like you a lot more if you just kind of like you know let me kind of talk a little bit about what I've learned since I'm the one who's been studying it for like 15 years and you just started studying it but there's this insecurity when a woman has a um you know when a woman has like an a, a like doesn't doesn't have all that healed right there can be this sort of insecurity that comes about that makes one feel they need to act and do all these things to get love that's a trap women don't or really in general the feminine side doesn't need to act to get love it needs to just be lovable and and love itself and just want to be cherished and someone will cherish it um so like it's kind of funny but you know if you listen to pat allen she's an amazing relationship counselor she gives really really good advice for the feminine party is um don't be so confrontational like just be non-confrontational and watch how good your relationships unfold with men it, uh, with a strong masculine man like if you want a real man not like a beta male not like a man baby a man child you get them they'll you know do whatever you want you just compete with them all day they'll just they'll just wait around until it's time to like have sex you know what i mean they'll just play along with it it's really sad and pathetic and that's a whole issue that men have to work on um but i guess right now i'm focusing on the the feminine side so for women be non-confrontational. If he says, okay, oh, great, I'll pick you up at seven. Don't say pick me up at 7.30. Don't say pick me up at eight. Say, okay, seven o'clock it is. I'll adapt to that. I'll go with the flow of that. I'll be watery. I'll be like the moon with that. It's not gonna make it any easier for him to respect you if you just nitpick every little thing he's doing. Oh no, pick me up at 7.30. Or, you know, see me as an astrologer, it's like, da-da-da. Oh, but what about this Nick Shotcher thing? Or what about this or that? What about something I watched on some random pop culture YouTuber's channel who's got a million views but never really trained himself and doesn't know anything, he's just a great marketer, you know? <laughs> it's like, ugh. It's just, it's just, I just don't feel respected. So I'm just like, all right, I'm not gonna talk to you anymore. And that's, <laughs> you know, it's kinda like, I can't, I can't tell you how many times women who have been really into astrology and really like wanted me to like them have done the exact wrong thing by doing that. You know what I mean? And then I, they, because again, I do want a woman who's into astrology. I, I feel like I have to date a woman who's at least respects this stuff because this is what I do. So I need to be respected for what I'm doing. So I do want a girl that's into astrology and yoga and all this stuff, but it's kind of um, hard to find women who are actually doing that and staying authentic with their feminine side and not just trying to be like men about it, if that makes sense. Okay, so here are some other really cool tips for relationships that really helped me out a lot um, when I learned about them with dating. And uh, they're just things that you never learn in school or in this modern uh, politically correct world, you know? So I'm just gonna break this down for you. This is coming, I learned this from Pat Allen, the relationship counselor. She's really famous, really successful, and she uses Jungian archetypes. And um, she's, she's really a great relationship counselor if you're looking for more advice and help on these things. And then, um, like bonding, this is even more fascinating. With bonding, men bond when they give, when they give their, time their energy or their money or when they invest their time and energy and money you could say um that's how men bond <laughs> i just it's funny because i wanted to use the word invest because men will be more bonded to their bank account to their stock market portfolio to their crypto portfolio than they will be to a woman because they put so much into that and they don't put anything into a woman and then they wonder why they're not investing into a woman but men we bond by putting more into a woman women bond when they receive things and it's not that much the other way around so you got you women out here don't give me stuff if you want to like if you want me to, i'm just playing that uh, if you want um a guy to like you don't give them stuff don't go give them flowers give them a book give them a vedic astrology book if they're an astrologer no don't bother with that don't bother uh wait for them to give something to you or tell them what you like and ask for it and see if they'll give it to you 
that's when they that's how you will get them to like you actually um, when a woman gives me something like yeah uh, when a woman gave me a Vedic astrology book or, or gave me chocolate or brought over something I was just like, oh, cool. I guess I don't need that anymore. Like, all right, cool. Like, you know, I can, I now I don't have to buy chocolate. There's no emotion. There's no sense of love conveyed. I really need you guys to know that. When you give, but when you, I give flowers to a woman, give a woman chocolate, give a woman anything, there's actually a sense of love that will be lit up within that person's psyche or if they're a strongly feminine person within their feminine side. Men will actually feel that love when they give something to a woman more than when they get things. So let men do things for you. That's the whole problem is again, the modern day world, women are like, oh no, I wanna pay for the check, I wanna pay for this, I wanna pay my way, da, da, da. The man can't bond to that. The man's thinking like, in his mind, he just feels insulted. He's like, well, what do you need me for? Like, you've got, you got all your stuff taken care of. You're paying for yourself, you're good. I, am I just a dick in a jar? What am I for you? I'm gonna, I don't feel respected, I'm not gonna bond, I'm gonna walk away from this, you know? I'm not gonna text you back. And then they wonder why that happens, you know? And uh, and men who aren't bonding, it's because you're not doing anything for a woman. That happens a lot, I notice, later on in the relationship, like a few years into a relationship. Men need to go and just buy their woman a new dress or something, you know? Like, just keep showing you love them, but they don't want to. Um, so then asking for thoughts on, uh, like when it comes to um, personal matters. Uh, asking for thoughts on personal matters when a man wants to know like hey does this does this shirt look good on me he really just wants to know constructively is this a good shirt to wear hey do these sunglasses look good he's just looking for a constructive suggestion and advice when women ask for hey does this does this dress look good on me hey does this shirt look good on me hey do these sunglasses look good on me they're more often asking not really for constructive advice they're more often asking do you love me in light of this situation regardless of what i'm wearing regardless of whether my dress looks so so this is the classic thing like hey does this dress make me look fat the answer is always no honey you look amazing you look amazing in any dress that's the answer always if a man gives an answer other than that he's a fucking idiot you should run from him um that is the answer oh i just can't stress that enough you know what i mean um so women usually are not asking for a constructive advice they're asking do you love me anyway in light of x this question so keep that in mind and don't answer from your left brain answer more from your loving empathic state discriminating when, like see men discern and discriminate the difference between things through intelligence and rational left brain thinking women discriminate through feeling again that all-knowing moon-like nature drugs when men take drugs they take them to suppress their masculine side it's frustrated so they're taking drugs just to feel things women take drugs to suppress their feelings and their feminine side and to just go into their masculine side so we take drugs to suppress our dominant side feeling loved men need to be respected for what they think and do again like i was saying that's how they're they're gonna feel loved is by feeling respected for what they think and do and not being competed with argued with uh doubted questioned constantly and uh you know women need to feel loved and uh for for how they feel themselves for just who they are they need to feel loved and respected for just who they are and how they feel and it's not like they have to do as much it's just their being you know and again on a superficial level it's like women are desirable for their bodies the male body is not that it's not that a, it's not a beautiful thing yeah you know i mean occasionally it can be but it's not <laughs> normally a thing that's meant to be cherished as much um so uh and then oh man feeling good this is crucial Men feel good when we do good. Women do good when we feel good. Very crucial. Women have to feel good to do good. Men have to do good to feel good. When it comes to healing a relationship, men approach it with a positive offering, a positive idea, here's how I wanna fix it. Women tend to approach it with, here's all the things that are wrong with the relationship. 
but you need to know that so that you know that they're actually still wanting to fix it. When they say, here's why it's impossible for us to work out, what they're really saying is, I want you to fix this right now. Tell me how this can work out or else, I'm, or else it really isn't, you know? Um, lying, <laughs> you know, uh, lying is something that when men do it, we lie to others first, we extrovert it. We, we again, we, we lie outwardly to others first and then we rationalize it and explain a reason to ourselves why it was okay that we lied. <laughs> and then uh, women, lie to them, women we lie to themselves first actually because it's harder to feel, you know what I mean? So they lie about how they feel and inwardly and then they lie to others or you know, it kind of goes more outwardly um, but at first for women, they have to kind of lie to themselves first to feel better and then later on just carries it on to others. That's why it's even more important for women to know how you feel in your heart, for the, the feminine side. And that's why going and getting a reading, it's so helpful to get an astrology reading where your feminine side is able to basically, like, or it's important to get a reading to know if your feminine or masculine side are afflicted, basically. And if you're having problems with this, this can be very helpful. Um, and then talking about ourselves, that's another great one because men say great things about themselves because it's It's actually more true things that they want to do and that they hope to accomplish They haven't accomplished them yet, but they hope to in the future and they likely will women lie to themselves more out of uh, Again to cover up how they feel and to compensate for how they feel you see this a lot with the women healers these you know how many instagram women do you know who are like always posting their yoga postures and their morning meditation and everything how good they're being and everything they're 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 they want you to know how great they are they're talking about themselves a lot see what happens is that's actually healthier to come from a masculine side coming from a feminine side talking about how great you are it's actually your wounded psyche trying to compensate for how not great you so unfortunately, it's actually a huge red flag for a female healer if she's constantly talking about how great she is and how accomplished she is and how much stu great stuff she's done. That's a red flag that she is not healed. She is actually running further from real healing and she's trying to compensate by doing a lot. And unfortunately, men can go and do a lot, like the sun, can just go light up the kingdom and, and do things and actually feel a lot better and heal from relationships, heal in general. Psycho psychological studies have proven this that men heal quicker from relationships by going out and doing things and acting accomplishing a new thing women don't heal psychologically from that at all they only heal from uh, wounds and breakups from being loved again or being in a healthy cherishable environment that's why women really need sisterhood and to be around the company of other women or to be around other supportive people and environments when they need to heal Okay, so this is a lot of uh, helpful in insights on um, masculine and feminine energy. So uh, I hope that helps you guys. And um, remember that male and female is within us both. We all have these things, but there's just tendencies that you'll notice. Um, whereas, you know, men will avoid their feelings, you know, like I said, and want to go and look, check their crypto portfolio and invest more time into that than into their feelings or emotions or women. But women will do their, on their end, they will go and, uh, try to talk about how great they are and overcompensate for their feelings by acting and doing and trying to get love through that. And uh, of course, you're, the woman's masculine side will feel better, but her feminine side won't and vice versa for the man. So these are very important things. These are very important tips for us all to be able to heal in this modern world.